software developers are given problems that need to be solved. This could be a complex mathematical formula based upon lots of inputs, like properly calculating your taxes. Or it could be a series of steps that need to be used to control a cam, or computer-assisted manufacturing robot arm, or any other number of things. The developer will take an abstract directive, properly calculate a person's taxes, and then from there, create a step-by-step -step process to solve that problem. The developer must break the problem down into sections of simple, small steps that a computer can understand. Generally, a computer can understand three basic blocks of steps. Within these basic blocks, we build more and more complex structures by putting them together. Let's look at these three. First is a process. A computer is expected to be able to process information. This might be as simple as adding two numbers or capitalizing a set of text. Sometimes these processes have many steps or mathematical rules. Other times it involves some sort of I.O. or input-output. This could be writing to a screen, reading from a file, or sending a signal to control a motor like on that robot arm. Processes will be run in the order they are encountered. If a process has multiple sub-processes, it might be relegated into a separate function or procedure so it can logically operate as one single process. By grouping steps into a function or sub-procedure, you can then logically organize your code and call these tasks multiple times throughout your entire program. A decision block. Computers often need to perform a set of processes if a condition is true or another set of processes if the condition is false. This is called a decision block. The condition is a question that has to be provided as a true-false answer. So you can't say based on the color, but you can say if the color is blue. Decisions let the computer change the path based upon the condition. They allow a program to execute a set of processes if the condition is met or completely skip that set of processes. A decision body will hold the processes to execute and may include other decision blocks or even repetition blocks, which we'll look at in just a minute. Now, repetition blocks allow for a process of our set of blocks to be repeated over and over. There are two major types of repetition blocks. Conditional, where they repeat the set of blocks until a task is met or fails to be met. And there's also what they call a counting loop, which will execute a given number of times. Within the buyer repetition block, you may have other repetition blocks, condition blocks, or just set of processes. You will build an algorithm around these three blocks using as many or as few as are needed to meet your goals.